I'm going to go over the urinary system model, which we often call the urinary system plaque. And we're going to start with the kidney, and then we're going to zoom in to just one part of the kidney, and then we're going to zoom in even further. And I'll explain what all of these are. So um, when you're looking at the kidney, this up here is the adrenal gland, which we don't really talk about. Um, in this chapter. So I'm going to pretend that that's not there. When you're looking at the gross anatomy of the kidney, meaning the obvious big anatomy of the kidney, you can see the renal artery carrying blood into the kidney, and that's part of the systemic circuit. So it's going to be red blood, right? Oxygenated blood. And then in the capillaries, you're going to see that the blood is going to turn from red to blue. So there are two pathways that you're going to be learning in um, this chapter, and one is the path of blood. And it starts with um, the renal artery here, and the renal artery then branches and sends off all kinds of little arteries up in here, and we are gonna call them all the renal artery. And then in some capillary beds, the renal artery leads to um, this capillary bed, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but the blood turns from red to blue and then returns in the renal vein and exits out the kidney. And one thing you need to remember is that blood coming into the kidney is has more waste products than blood leaving the kidney. So that's not true in any other um, in any other organ. So the blood coming into the kidney is rich in oxygen nutrients and um, also is gonna have waste in it, just like all blood does, and blood coming out of the kidney, so that's the renal artery, blood coming out of the kidney in the renal vein is going to have less oxygen, more carbon dioxide, but also uh, fewer wastes, because that's what the kidney does, is remove wastes. All right, so then in if you just look at the kidney, you hopefully can see, it's kind of obvious, that there are two main shades where this is darker, right? And this is darker, this is darker. But then out around the outside, it is um, lighter in color. So just like many organs, the inside of the organ is called the medulla. So if you're looking at all of these dark areas put together, we're gonna call it the renal medulla. And then the light areas around the outside are called the renal cortex, okay? All those areas. Now, let me have you take a look at this three-dimensionally, this one dark area. We call it a renal pyramid because it's shaped like a pyramid, right? So this is one renal pyramid, but all of the renal pyramids together collectively are called the renal medulla. You can see lots of stripes in the renal pyramids. And these stripes are created by these little tubes that I'm gonna talk about in a minute. But the tubes, oh, over here it shows it, where there's this one big long tube that's called a collecting duct. The collecting ducts collect urine from the structures that make the urine, which are called nephrons. So this is one nephron over here, and this is a nephron over here. And they make urine and empty the urine into this collecting duct. The collecting duct leads to this big general region here, which we call the renal pelvis. The renal pelvis passes urine then into the ureter, which goes down to the urinary bladder. Okay, um, now we're gonna zoom in more. So this model over here is one segment of this model over here. So if you're looking at the whole kidney and I were to just take this part or just this part, it's part cortex, part medulla, part renal pyramid, then that's what you're looking at over here. So this large region here is um, one renal pyramid and then this is the renal cortex around the edges of that renal pyramid. That means this space down here is the renal pelvis. And these are collecting ducts, and they collect urine from multiple nephrons. This is one nephron, this is another nephron, and this is another nephron. There's also some, there are also some blood vessels here. I'm 
going to stick to the list in your lab, the word bank, so to speak. And there are two, there might be, depending on when you're listening to this video, there might be two terms that I'm not going to cover and that you will not be labeling or identifying in the lab. And they are the afferent and efferent arterioles. Those are not a part of your lab, at least. Um, you can ask your instructor. Again, it depends on right now. I'm, I'm recording this in fall of 2020, and I'm removing those two terms from uh, the list, ju maybe just for the semester that we'll see. So um, this is one nephron. We're going to zoom in. This is a renal artery in red, and it brings blood toward the nephron. And this little ball of red capillaries is called the glomerulus. Around the outside, this tan region is the glomerular capsule. And you'll see up here that the glomerular capsule is usually a, like a spherical shape around the glomerulus. It's been cut open here and here so that you can see the inside. And then the rest of the nephron is the proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop or loop of nephron, and then distal convoluted tubule, which empties into the collecting duct. So the nephron is glomerular capsule with the glomerulus inside of it. And then the proximal convoluted tubule, nephron loop, distal convoluted tubule, it empties into the collecting duct. I just repeated myself there for you. But um, you should know the path of blood through the kidney and then the path of urine through the kidney. Finally, this is one glomerulus covered in podocytes. So in red, you can see the capillaries of the glomerulus. And in tan, these are podocytes covering the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a ball of capillaries. Around the outside here, see the number 31 there? This is the glomerular capsule, and that means this is the proximal convoluted tubule. 